great sleep. Wow. Oh, good night's sleep. Wow. This video presents my workflow on how I finish splints and orthotics using the Sprint Ray and their materials to the completed appliance. And believe me, it's amazing. I don't touch in the back at all. I touch on the front platform. And I placed a little lingual ramp to keep me forward. I'm wearing this at night. You can tell I talk a little differently with it, but it's working quite well. In our office, we have fallen in love with the Sprint Ray system. They have it work so well with the Ray Cloud and the workflow. It's really easy to do and delegate. And this video will show you how I get through making a splint. And it's for myself, by the way. How you doing? My name is James Clem. You can tell I'm having a lot of fun in this video. This is a workflow on how I finish appliances using the Sprint Ray system. I believe in self-reliance. I do a lot of things in my clinical theater. That's one reason why I like CEREC. That's one reason why I like the Prime Scan. I like ExoCAD, which I designed this appliance in. I like that control, even though Sprint Ray has their cloud where you can do AI software design using their cloud. They'll send it back to you in a short period of time and you can print that. I like control. That's one reason why I'm into self-reliance. So this is an appliance that I'm making for myself. Just a little history on myself. I have sleep apnea. You can see a uh, CBCT of my joint here and I am compressed. I'm back and up. I have some arthritis. Historically, I have worn a sleep appliance that really advances my lower jaw and I ran into some occlusal issues with that and I'm not too comfortable. But I have found using a deprogrammer with an anterior ramp that allows me to organically move my jaw forward, which means it's a natural position for me, this appliance is working great. I do a lot of deprogrammers in this sense of where I cover the back teeth so they don't erupt, but they're out of occlusion. What I've done in the past with EMGs is that most people who don't bite on their back teeth, the masseters shut down. And we've seen that in EMG studies. So I have found that works, doesn't work on everyone, but the majority of my clients work best with this type of deprogrammer. So what I'm doing here with my ExoCAD is I'm designing that same appliance. I do like to see that jaw position taken in the mouth so we don't open on the articulator, particularly with a compressed joint, because you want the ability for the jaw to move forward and have that support with an anterior ramp. So that's what we're doing in this video. So with self-reliance, I'm going to go through how I scan myself, just a few little tips to make the scanning go really well. It's interesting placing on gloves to do my own scanning, but I might as well stay in protocol. I love the Optigate. Use a size that's slightly larger than you think you need. The secret to keeping the OptiGate in while scanning is place some oil. Here we're using olive oil on the inside of the OptiGate and that way the camera doesn't stick to it and pull it out. So I'm going to start my scan here. I still use a little bit of Opti spray just to cut down on the reflection. I get a much quicker scan this way. It's fast, saves time. It's a smaller file. I will describe in another video on how I establish a jaw position for a splint. I think you'll find that very interesting, but it's nice taking one on yourself because you can actually feel a really good position when you find it. As far as the software goes, if you don't have that ability to design either in InLab, which you can export as an STL into the Sprint Ray system, or the ExoCAD, which I like. I like to create all my own appliances because I have strategies in what I do. Just a few clips here. You can see we have a nice flat platform. So we're not locking in those anterior teeth and the posterior component of the appliance is out of occlusion. It's really easy to design this in the ExoCAD and we export it out to the Sprint Ray. Just a few comments about setting it up in the Sprint Ray software. You do have a downloadable software 
but I find that at the time of this video, the supports are just a little robust and they're hard to remove. I like the Sprint Ray Cloud and their software online. We do position the splint at an angle so the supports are not on that bike platform. And with the online software at this time, it's really easy to remove those supports just with your finger. They pop right off, they're smaller, and they're easier to clean up. At this point in our video workflow here, we're going to go ahead and remove the supports, clean up the appliance. I'll go through the various steps, how we polish, which we don't do a lot of, and then we're going to use the candy coating technique. Thank you to Dr. Wally Rennie there at the Mod Institute. He's the one that brought this forth in our industry. I have found that it's a lot better than polish, and I'll work you through that whole process, and this is what we use in my practice. The Sprint Ray Night Guard Flex is easy to remove from the build plate. Clean the build plate up and place back into the printing unit. I want to clean that platform to make sure there's no little specks that can get in the way of the next print. And then clean the instruments. Here we're using alcohol spray, either 99 or 91%. Printing can be messy. Make sure you're wearing gloves as you see in this illustration here and keep the instruments clean. At the time of this video, I prefer the Rayware Cloud software. It has better support options and the supports are easier to get off. We did maximize them, but they're not on the deprogramming platform anteriorly, which makes these restorations drop in or I don't have to touch the occlusion. Before the initial cleaning, I want to remove my right glove. I'm going to hold the spray bottle with that glove and I don't want to get uncured resin on my spray bottle handle. So here we're gonna spray and clean. This is alcohol. And I mentioned 91 to 99%. Use high intensity air that blows out the alcohol and resin combo and do that twice, cleaning the internal and the external. Now here, if you wash it really well externally, all I do is dry. The other option is to go ahead and do the full wash and dry if the material needs more cleaning and it's really proficient that way. So now we're ready to take it to our lab bench and move forward with the next steps. I like the diamond twist by Premier Dental to remove those support nodules that are just barely there on the surface. We're going to do the candy coating technique next, but by removing those little nodules, we can keep the candy coating technique really thin. And I can tell you when I placed it into my mouth, it was just as smooth as ice. I like to use this first step here just to smooth those areas of where the supports were attached to the appliance. I have found that the diamond twist works really well on acrylic-like surfaces. It doesn't goo up those surfaces, it cleans really well, and there's minimal residue. Go ahead and feel those surfaces to make sure all those minor, small support areas are nice and smooth. It does make a difference, at least in my hands, and I have a really sensitive mouth. This appliance is for me, and uh, I love this diamond twist. It just works so well. I used to use it to clean up my Emacs years ago. They will last for years, and uh, so I 
have found good use for the diamond twist. Spray away any remaining residue and then take a alcohol wipe and clean those surfaces. We're getting this ready for our next step and that's the candy coat technique, placing a thin layer of the flex resin before we do the cure. We want to make sure that the material is dry and there's no alcohol remaining. Here we're taking some of the Nycard flex material with a disposable brush and placing it on the functional surface. The secret here is to dab it at the edge. I don't mind if it's a little thicker on the peripheral borders and then when we get to the occlusal portion, we keep it a little thinner, particularly if you're going to be having an occlusal area. Here, the posterior extensions are not in occlusion since this is a deprogrammer. But you'll see that it just cleans up the surfaces so nice. Work your way around the appliance, particularly on the lingual of that appliance where the tongue is going to rest. We've already polished it well with the diamond twist. Now we're placing a thin coat and it will look just like that polished ice once it cures. And we're going to use two curing cycles. Cycle number one is going to be to cure the overall appliance. And then we'll do a second cycle with glycerin. You can see right where our platform is on the deprogrammer that's really thin, so it's not gonna interfere with our occlusion. To keep the Procure from getting gooed up with uncured resin, we're going to use a glass ceramic. We're placing the internal component of that appliance down, place it in the middle, and then choose the middle curing option. And that will take eight minutes. Following the first cure, we're going to take that appliance and transfer it over to another ceramic container with glycerin in it and do a second cure. What the second cure is for in the glycerin is to remove the oxygen inhibited layer and this appliance will result with a high gloss finish without any polishing. Retrieve the appliance from the glycerin, and we're going to do the final scrub technique here with Dawn soap. It will remove the glycerin, clean up the appliance, and also remove any type of flavors that could still be residing on that appliance. Following the cleaning of this appliance, which was for me, I immediately placed it in my mouth, and there was no flavor whatsoever, and it was smooth as ice. <laughs> As you can see, I was having fun with the appliance. What's really interesting is that when we decompress the jaw joint, it relaxes the medial pterygoids quite often. And when those muscles relax, 
It doesn't compress the brachial plexus and we will see an increased upper body strength. That's why I was doing this thing. And I've used that for athletes as well when I make their appliance to make sure I put their jaw in a decompressed position so they're not locked in and it works so much better. And I will produce more videos in the future on my workflow using the ExoCAD software. There's different type of appliances and orthotics that I use. My D programmer is one of my favorite ones. I also use a lower orthotic where we just have posterior occlusion, which allows the lower jaw to heal, particularly if they're compressed, they'll work forward and we have to adjust them. I use that a lot with my Team D clients that are pretty severe. And particularly before I get ready to reconstruct people, I want them to be able to wear appliance to see how compatible they are with a vertical shift and getting them into a really nice balanced position, which we then use to move them into comprehensive care. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you post them below. You folks take care of yourself and I'll see you folks in that next video. Thanks for watching.